The bad news is one of the things that, was, uh, that policymakers got wrong, and a lot went right, by the way, but one of the things that policymakers got wrong in uh, 2008 was misjudging what happens following a financial crisis. Because uh, I think we've now learned that following a financial crisis, two things happen quite predictably. One is uh, that the labor market remains weak for a very long period of time. And the second thing that happens is public debt skyrockets. Uh, and you've got a duality of problems that are happening. Um, on the first one, the prolonged weakness in the labor market, uh, I actually think this was the more fundamental mistake. And it, it stems from the macroeconometric models that the Council of Economic Advisors use, that the Congressional Budget Office uses, uh, that, that the Fed uses, uh, not having a detailed financial sector built into them. And so what the models were doing is they were looking at the loss of wealth from the housing bust, and they were comparing it effectively to the loss of wealth from the IT bubble collapse, seeing that those were about equivalent, which, by the way, they were on impact, and then projecting that the economy would respond like it did after the IT bust in a V-shaped way. The problem with that goes to the heart of what's missing in those macro models, which is in the IT bust, the losses were spread uh, across a, a wide equity markets, basically, so they were uh, very broadly distributed, whereas in the housing bust, they were disproportionately concentrated in highly leveraged financial institutions, which then propagated the losses and exacerbated them. And so because the models were missing that detail, their predictions were completely wrong, and that then led to problems in policymaking. Let me, before I turn to where we are now, I, let me just pause on this because I find it kind of interesting to look back, although I try not to do that too much, but I'm here and I will. Um, the big debate that's going on, uh, or the big debate that has gone on with regard to the 2009 stimulus is on the one hand, people saying it didn't work, and on the other hand, the other side saying it was too small. And I think they're both wrong. So the evidence suggesting it didn't work, uh, I think is undermined by the, the, the facts when you look, for example, across states. Uh, the states that got more of the exogenous, the non-endogenous uh, components of the stimulus bill did have more rapid employment growth uh, subsequently than other states, which is at least suggestive that there was an impact there. Um, and there's a whole variety of other evidence, I think, consistent with that. So I'm, I'm dismissive of the folks who say, uh, and by the way, standard macro models would also suggest the stimulus did something. Um, so I'm dismissive of that, but now let's take the harder argument, which I'll call the, uh, you know, the critique from the left, that the stimulus should have been 1.5 trillion instead of eight or 900 billion, um, which is a harder argument to, to critique, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, and I'm not even gonna do the easier way of critiquing it of uh, saying that that wasn't politically feasible, because I was in a room and I can tell you it was not politically feasible, but let's play the game of what if it were. Um, what if it were feasible? And what I would say is, if the stimulus had been 1.5 trillion, but the rest of the framework, that V-shaped assumption, had not been altered, I don't think we would have done much good, or that much more good. Uh, the fundamental problem with the stimulus was not how much stimulus was being delivered in the fourth quarter of 2009, but rather that how little was being delivered in 2011 and 12, and that was by design. Things that spent out slowly were seen as a negative, as opposed to if, you had correct, if we had correctly analyzed the problem as an L-shaped uh, recovery and a kind of hard slog, there would have been more openness to stimulus being delivered in 2011 and 12, which is to say the core problem was temporary, timely, and targeted as being the defining characteristics of the stimulus because following a financial crisis, that's exactly the opposite of what you want. You, you want a five-year sustained, uh, not temporary or timely thing. You want it to be timely but sustained. And so uh, that's missing from the debate over the size of the stimulus because I think the key uh, shortcoming was the timing uh, involved as opposed to the flow in the fourth quarter of 2009 or early 2010. And if you look back at the GDP data, you'll actually see in the fourth quarter of 2009, the economy was picking up pretty rapidly. The problem was there wasn't a lot then to follow it, and that was the key mistake. 